Today's word comes from John chapter 14, starting with verse 8. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, we will be content. Jesus replied, have I been with you for so long and you have not known me, Philip? The person who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own initiative, but the Father residing in me performs his miraculous deeds. Believe me that I am in the Father, the Father is in me, but if you do not believe me, believe because of the miraculous deeds themselves. I tell you the solemn truth, the person who believes in me will perform the miraculous deeds that I am doing and will perform greater deeds than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. You may be seated. Today's sermon title is a question. Greater than him? In the Old Testament, God revealed his name, his identity, and his plan for Israel. Everything, when you read through what we call the Old Testament, everything points to Jesus. Everything in the Old Testament points to Jesus, from, from the Passover fast to all the different festivals, to all the different things, everything pointed towards Jesus. You had folks like David and Isaiah writing about a king coming in the future, writing about events they could, we would never live to witness, all pointed towards Jesus Christ. And then Jesus came. He did what, the, what he was supposed to do. He did the work that God sent him for. Then he died on the cross, defeated sin and death, was resurrected, returned to heaven, and commissioned a brand new group of folks to do his work. We call them the church. See, Jesus could have had something where he just kind of stayed forever and been the king and the glory and, and everybody would just come to him, just to, to come to him. But he made a decision that's unusual. He said, you know, I'm going to look at all these ragged folks that don't deserve it. I'm going to die on a cross for them, be resurrected. Then I'm going to let them spread my word. I don't know about you, but how many of y'all found that sometimes you want something done right, you have to do it yourself? Amen. Y'all find that happy where, you know, you ask somebody else to do something, they do it all right. I should have done it myself. Because they just, they just messing my stuff all up. You know? Delegation is the hardest thing for leaders to learn. Sometimes when you manage people, you have to learn how to trust them to do the job. And sometimes you have to teach them how to do it while they're supposed to be trying to do it. You know, uh, Bill Belichick, who's a coach of the Patriots, they, 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 one of his favorite quotes when they want to ask, how do you win championships? He says, do your job. That's what he tells them. Do your job. Do what you're supposed to do. So Jesus, I don't get it. Because I wouldn't have trusted me with the gospel. I wouldn't Because I might mess it up, misinterpret it, and I might throw some fancy stuff up in there and change it. And that doesn't that happen. But yet Jesus still said, I'm going to let these folks spread my gospel. I'm going to have a convergence of Jews and Gentiles, a community a family that's going to spread my gospel. And it's our job to point people toward belief in Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing? The church. We're supposed to prepare people for a second coming and we have to accomplish God's purpose on earth. And Jesus said we would do greater things than he did. <clears throat> what? Praise God. No. In fact, if that did happen, we'd probably be looking to commit them somewhere. Something's wrong with that person. <laughs> Their body's just not working yet. <laughs> and we have to see, see we, when the reason Paul uses the illustration of the body is to let us know how we're supposed to operate as a church. Every part, part is important. Try living without one of your body parts. You can adapt to it, but it's very difficult. Because every piece, every cell, every every hair has a purpose and a reason why it happens. <coughs> when we get colds, we all that stuff we always have. Well, that's part of the body trying to attack what's, what's trying to attack us. Mm -hmm. 
That's how the body operates. We do, we're supposed to, what does that mean? We're supposed to support one another. That means if somebody's going through something, I ought to know about it because I'm part of the body. Oh. When you stub your toe, doesn't your whole body know you stub your toe? Oh, yeah. well, you stub your toe like, ow, everything, top, head, and soul, you feel, everybody knows you're hurt. <laughs> but sometimes in the body of Christ, folks will be hurt, and we don't know about it. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because we're not connected to where we're supposed to be. We, the Spirit of God should tell us when somebody's hurt. And we just start praying for them. Don't talk about it. Pray for them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray for Sister So and So because I know she's going through something. Lord, I can sense it in my spirit. She's going through something. And Brother So and So is struggling. Lord, I rebuke the enemy on that man right now in the name of Jesus. How many of y'all pray those prayers? Amen. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. Amen. We have to love one another. Mm -hmm. Love one another. Yes, yes, love sir. one another. Love one another. Mm -hmm. We just got through the Valentine's with a lot of folks and a whole lot of fake and I love you. Well, that's it. That's it. Are you giving my Valentine's? Yes, sir. I think the best part of Valentine's is when you're a real little kid you have no clue what you're doing. <laughs> you just walk up there and like, will you be my Valentine? Oh, oh, I love you. Do you love me? The same little love notes. The little, the little check box. And then, you know, the girl puts no, you're all disappointed. <laughs> Or well, if they don't answer, you go over, hey, I sent you a note. You answer my note. <laughs> you ain't got no clue. But loving one another means that we, we, we support one another, but we also were there loving the good, the bad, and the other. That means if I see my brother or sister doing some ugly stuff, I don't pick up the phone and call somebody else. Pick up the phone and call Jesus. Lord, I'm not sure what they were doing. It looked like they were doing wrong. I rebuke them. Bind up the enemy. Going over to, hey, uh, what's he doing over here? What? Are you going to be here? No, well, you know, I was, uh, I was witnessing. No, you weren't witnessing. I saw you. Come on, come on. Come on. That's love, isn't it? How many of y'all do that for brothers and sisters when you were growing up? You see them getting ready to get in some trouble. Boy, don't you do that? You know a woman's coming your way. You better stay out of that. Huh? That's the way it's supposed to be. We love one another. The body is about health. The body is about growth. When you are doing what you're supposed to do as a body, your body stays healthy and grows. Of course, if you eat too much, it grows too. We're talking about the healthy growth. Amen? All right. It's not an organization. It's an organism. Huh. It's living. I bet you if you go talk to, to, to nurse, the nurses in our church and talk about the difference between an organism, organism and, a, and a piece of wood, they can tell you. See, this isn't alive anymore, it's dead. But an organism is alive. It's functioning. It does things. It's not a building. It's the body. This building is not the church. Huh? I'm going to church. Well, if you're saved, you are the church. Huh? It's not about programs. It's about people. You can have all kinds of Women's Missionary Society and YPD and stewards and trustees and all that. It's not about all that. It's about the people. If people aren't getting saved and they're not getting changed and not becoming part of the body and getting and we're integrating them into the body, then what good is the church? Because that's what he told us to do. He said, go make disciples. He didn't say, go have meetings. Huh? He said, go make disciples. So that's what we should be doing, make disciples. Team. How many of y'all ever heard the acronym team? Together, each achieves more. See, the body of Christ, the reason Jesus was able to say confidently, you will do greater works than me is because it's more than one of us. And here, here's what we have to understand. 1 Corinthians 12, 15 says this. If the foot says, since I am not a hand, I am not part of the body, it does not lose its membership in the body because of that. You know, I'm, I'm not a preacher, so it must not be important. Nope. 
We have, we have folks that we don't see on Sundays that come in and clean our church. Good members that leave the tithes, pay tithes. We don't see them. They're, they're just as important as the folks that get up here behind the mic. Hello. Here's what else says. And if the ear says, since I'm not an eye, I'm not part of the body, it does not lose its membership in the body because of that. Just because you do something different doesn't mean you're not part of the body. Sometimes we classify where you are in the body of Christ. Well, that, that person's been here for 20 years, so they must really be saved. No, they could be wrong Say with it. hell. Hello? Say Just because they're coming into the building doesn't mean they're saved. I was at a service uh, a couple weeks ago, and one of my, my, my fellow pastors in the Amity Church said he was an ordained itinerant deacon when he got saved. He was reverend when he got saved. Hello? Their folk got reverend, doctor, all kinds of stuff by the name, don't know Jesus. We have, we have to remember not to look at what well, on the outside and try to determine whether or not someone is saved or not. We have to do what what look at the fruit and see are they doing what God has told them to do. Ooh, there's only really one person you know who's saved. Everybody know who that is? Mm -hmm. Yourself. Mm -hmm. All right. That's why you shouldn't judge. If the whole body were an eye, what part would do the error? Hear that? Mm -hmm. This is God's word. If everybody was an eye, who would, how would we hear? Mm -hmm. If the whole were an ear, what part would exercise the sense of smell? Mm -hmm. But God has placed each of the members of the body just as he decided. Mm -hmm. He put you in the body for a specific purpose mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. I used to always want to be something I wasn't. I always wanted to be one of those great singers, you know? I want to be able to get up and I sang, the anointing would flow, and people would start crying and just rushing up because of how great my singing was. I wanted to be able to. <laughs> God didn't call me to sing. I kind of sing. Usually I start singing a little over what y'all like really sing and say, you can take it from here if you want. <laughs> because that's not what God placed me in the body for. Some folk, you know, some folk get, don't look at what somebody else is doing, want to do with it. Do what God has called you to do. Yeah. Because what he's called you to do is very, very important. If God is all God has called you to do is be part of the finance committee, if all he's called you to do is clean the church, if God has called you to take up offerings, if God has called you to do announcements, if God has called you to lead youth service, if God just called you to just come and smile at folks. Yeah. Some of the most important people in the church are the ones that don't get all the recognition. It's like the body. There are parts of our body you don't see that are so vital to our existence. And we have to remember that. God puts us here. We're not the same member. There are many members, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor in turn can the head say to the foot, I do not need you. Somebody hear that? Mm -hmm. On contrary, those members that seem to be weaker are essential, and those members we consider less honorable, we clothe with great honor, and our unrepresentable members are clothed with dignity. We can't say to each other, we don't need you. I can't look at it. Oh, well, well, brother, I don't need you in the church. Yet. What? He's part of the body. Why do, why do we need so and so in the church? They always look kind of funny when they come in. Maybe maybe because God is working on something new. Mm -hmm. You need to see that. Or maybe if the dress is nice, maybe God wants you to take some of your money and go buy them or something. Would I say that out loud? Huh? As a church, our job is to love each other and understand that each of us has a different part in the body. Everyone doesn't say to play the same part. They don't. We all play a part. We're all important. We're all what God wants. Each of us is a member of the body of Christ. No one's more important than anybody else. God places here for the benefit of his kingdom. Here's something I want you to learn from today. Don't focus on yourself. I hear some people at a the church that say, I'm not getting fed at that church, so I'm going to go find a church I can get fed at. Is that your job, to go to church to eat? I know I'm saying spiritual, but sometimes it's the food after service, too. Now. 
Your job is to make disciples. Your job is to be part of a body. Your job is to come in and work with God. This isn't about you. I love all you narcissists out here. Figure this is all about you. It's not about you. It's about who? Jesus. He placed you here for a reason. Sometimes we're in churches so God can teach us a lesson to get us ready for where we need to go. I can look back at some of the places I was at and go, man, why was I there so long? And then I realized, wow, what, look what I learned. Either how to do or how not to do. Look at the maturity I gained. Look at the exposure, the, the different things I was exposed to that allowed me to grow better in Christ. God knows why he has you placed where he has you placed. He does. Do you trust him? See, engage with the church. If, if, you want to, if you really want to enjoy a church, get involved with it. Find out something you can get involved in. Find out a ministry you can do. Just, hey, I see this is going on. Is this, can I get involved with this? Can I help decorate the church? And those, some of those little things that we, we, we don't think are important are extremely important. And maybe they're not getting accomplished because you're not doing them. Hello? If God laid something on your heart, do it. That's what church is all about. See yourself as part of a larger picture. Understand the body of Christ is large but small. Large because we're all over the world, but small because we're right here in this community. And that larger plan and purpose are infused with God's power. God wants us to accomplish greater things through our size and number. That, that, everybody raise your hand. God wants to use you to do great things. Okay, point yourself. Say, say with me, God wants to use me to do great things. God wants me to be his instrument. Say it again, God wants to use me to do great things. Remember how you know that. Mark 16, 17, this is what Jesus said before he left. These signs will accompany those who believe. How many of y'all believe? In my name, they will drive out demons. Didn't say you have to have Reverend on the front of your room. A doctor behind you. He said those that believe will be able to drive in his name, in Jesus' name, drive out demons. They will speak in new languages. They will pick up snakes with their hands and whatever poison they drink will not harm them. That means somebody can try to do something to you that's not going to have any effect on you because you believe. And when and they will place their hands on the sick and they will recover. That might will. Now did it say uh, you know did it say you gotta you know look a certain way? Drive a certain car, go to a certain church, have a certain education. He said, these signs will accompany or follow those who believe. God wants us to do great things in his name. He created the church so that we could do great things in his name. He needs each and every one of us to step up, to stand up and say, I'm going to be part of that number. Don't look at yourself and say, well, maybe God wants to talk about me because he, he didn't know what I did. Yeah, he does. He knows what you did to save you anyway. He said, those who believe will do greater works than me. Greater. More in number. Miracles. That means everybody in the church, God is empowered to do great works. Wave your hand if you believe. Signs are going to accompany you. Say it. Signs are going to accompany you. Some of y'all didn't believe that, did you? Wave your hand. Signs are going to accompany you. Signs are going to accompany you because I believe. Amen. 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 Amen.